Princess Fairy Fire outside. Yeah, baby, she is going to do it. The Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. And welcome everybody to ASD Live, brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, Day 35. On the racing calendar, quick look back at last week's racing action. Taking a look at Wednesday, who were the hot jocks? Well, Jorge Carreño was. He had two wins on the card, but so did jockey Antonio Whitehall. And on the trainer's side, it was Marvin Buffalo winning the early daily double on Wednesday. And we seen speed do well all week long. Well, it was only a two-day week. But uh, Speed did great. Uh, three wire-to-wire -wire winners on Wednesday, and the other four winners were stalkers. Stretch, what did you see on the racetrack? Okay, yeah. I thought uh, quite impressive on just how the track track was last week. And, uh, again, it was like the week of weather last week. So um, I had the Wednesday a couple lengths slow. That's how it's kind of been playing most of the year. Um, like you said, it was kind of the stalkers and, and the closers, but I thought some of the, the speed carried, I think, uh, from a few weeks ago, the speed still wouldn't have carried, and there was a couple of the gate-to-wire winners uh, that did hang on, even, even the last uh, few races of the night. Uh, and then I've got to certainly uh, just mention uh, the Canadian Derby that was run at uh, Century Mile on Saturday night. Um, four horses finished one, the two horses that finished one, two here, Ended up finishing the reverse order uh, two and one uh, on the other day. And they were kind of ahead of the other ones. Uh, the exactor paid great. I don't know if you capitalized, uh, Kurt, but uh, I might have. Um, yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> because yeah. last year with Uncharacteristic winning it, they, they kind of left the Derby horses, the Manitoba Derby horses. They were kind of lukewarm on them. This year, they're more heavy on them saying, hey, the one-two finishers in the Manitoba Derby ran one-two in the Canadian Derby. Could happen again, and of course, it did. Yeah, and I had mentioned about just the figures on how fast that race was run um, because I, I knew the entire card, and it was just above-par performances. So I didn't see any of the horses uh, in the Canadian Derby that actually had those kind of figures. So I kind of thought it was a bit of a, a jump off the page for those two. I, I did like the the horse that finished second a little bit more, but uh, Exactor still uh, was good. We got eight races each day, Kurt, right? Woo, uh, big, 24 races the, this week. Exciting. I remember we said it was bad on the Monday, but it's going to be good this week. And yes, um, very excited. Uh, I, I think we better get started. I think so, too. We're going to kick it off with the 34th running of the CTHS sales stake. They're going to go six furlongs. A field of five two-year-old Manitoba bred stretch. Who do you got in here? Okay, some of these races may seem like a deja vu of what we're talking about because let's start with this first one. Uh, basically, same field as last Monday with the storm, and, and I'm going with the same selections. And uh, we're going to go with the four as my top selection. Actually, I, I like the horse a little bit more. Doesn't have the rail. Had the rail last on on Monday. Gets post four. Uh, basically, gets that extra furlong. Has a workout on um, August 17th that I really like because, you know, they did miss, miss that extra week. So I think that's going to help. Um, similar trip. Try to run down the speed. Certainly the five is the horse to beat. Absolutely has the most speed. The, can the horse carry the extra furlong based on the last race? Yes, it can. Uh, just hasn't had any activity since July 21st. So... I'm taking a, a little bit of an upset there. And then for to complete it, the three is my third one. Um, the only way I think the horse can maybe get in the top two is if the others regress and this one really improves. But uh, I think the six furlong does help. But uh, I'm going to leave it at four, five, three. Yeah, I really like number five. I love my life. There is some other speed in here with the two carpet K. But I love my life. If you watch the replay on that, this horse went to the front end and was well in hand by Chavi, Chavi and Chow 
every step of the way right to the wire. And this horse drew off easily. Lots left in the tank. I think it'll get the distance. It's just how much pressure will happen in the race. But I really like, I think this is a really promising Manitoba bred. And that's why I'm putting it on top. I do like no, number four, Russian Pearl. Improved greatly in the second start. Narrowly denied to Lady Cop in the debutante. This horse is getting better with each and every start. So that's my second play. And I like number two, Carpique. Showed good speed last time out. Well played, easily drew off to get the win. Well played, did have a start under the belt in Alberta. The horse that did beat Well Played that day ran second in a stake and then came back to win a stake. So that was a tough race that Carpique came out of. So that's my top three, five, four, and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number two, an allowance optional $15,000 claimer. For the boys, three and up, they're going to go six furlong stretch. What do you got? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, I've got my wrong picks. Uh, we're going to have to change. Beth, I need your help. It's, oh, come on, take Tapmaster. I, I, I like Tapmaster. I liked Tapmaster last time and got a nice uh, price, but I am going to go to Mr. Dazzle, the six horse. Oh, and sure. Be sure. like me. I did okay. have being like you. Uh, Beth, help me out. Make my picks just like uh, <laughs> like Kurtz. Uh, he gave me heck last time. It's the same race as Monday as again. All six are sent, um, entered in. It's a competitive race. Um, I guess I've convinced Kurt to switch over to my selections. Because I did have three six. <laughs> you did. Um, the horse has run a few seconds, but the key here is the cutback for me. I think this horse is better going the six furlongs. Made some moves going longer and then just kind of flattened out. I think that uh, I'm just going to run down the leaders. And uh, I like that workout on the ninth as well coming in. So that kind of put it over the edge for me. And then, then three is my second selection. Could have been my top selection for sure. Just throw out that last race. Um, I'm not too worried about that one. Um, has won stake races here at ASD. That's good. The horse should be right close to the speed. I think that just the class alone potentially could press and then take over and, and then have to hold off Mr. Dazzle, which is certainly possible with the class. And then I'll go to the one, the kind of the speed on the rail. Moves into the inside, has to break well. That's always a bit of the concern for the six furlongs. Um, there was more speed last time than, than this race. So maybe uh, if it gets away, maybe a bit of a breather could steal it. But I am going to leave it at 631. Yeah, I see a pile of speed with the one house limit, the three market king, the predominant speed. Throw in number four, Tapmaster, who the last time he went six furlongs, he was rated behind the leaders. And he had usually always shown speed. But I think he is going to show speed today and be right up there. So that does set it up for Mr. Dazzle. And I agree with Stretch. I think the cutback in distance of six furlongs, that is the key here. Yeah, he's had a lot of second and third itis so far this year, but has been beaten by a lot of real good ones. I think it's just going to get a dream trip. So I put him on top. I do like number three, Market King. The two races early on. Lights out races. I'm throwing out the seven and a half furlongs. Just didn't like it that day. But back-to-back -back, uh, place finishes, winning the nifty, and then second in the free press. That was a gutsy effort from just off it. So that's my second selection. And House Limit, the one, looks like a road horse. But what a sprint race last time out. This horse went to the front end and went right gate to wire. But it was the time of the race, one eleven and 4. That was very sharp that day. So if this horse runs back to that race, it just might fool them all. But I'm going to take 6, 3, and 1. Now we're carrying on to race number three, a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred maidens. They're going to go six furlong stretch. A little bit of a favorite, but is it beatable? Yeah, so yeah, it will be a big favorite for sure. I did select this horse last time. Kurt uh, thought this horse could be beat. He was right. I Because of there's some other speed. And five days back. And five days back. Yes, yeah, so a couple reasons there. I thought the horse ran fine. It did go pretty quick early and then got tired. I think there is a little bit of speed inside, but I think this horse can just uh, kind of carry the speed and, and eventually control the speed. This will be my last time I select this horse. If, if, uh, she, if he doesn't win, it's gate to wire. It's not a very tough field. Uh, I'm searching after that for, the, for, for second and third. So it's a bit of a drop-off. Um, we know the running style on the seven. 
We know the horse's stocking is in the money. Uh, we'll get in the money, a nice uh, place or show bet. If the three can't get the distance or does get some pressure, I think this is one of your more likely winners to come in there, other than that running for second. And then the four is, is very similar. Um, basically, uh, it's been right there. It does get Lasix, which should, should help, has a workout. And again, if the three backs up, it becomes between the seven and four to be in there. So I'll go three, seven, four. Yeah, I'm with you on Zipping to Impress. I thought it was back on short rest last time out. So that's why I thought the horse was beatable. Now has a couple weeks off. They add blinkers on today. Not sure if that will help Zipping to Impress, but they are trying something, and maybe that's just what's needed. This definitely is the horse to beat. I do like number seven, Lenny Zeal. The race three outs ago, the horse got in trouble. I waited for this horse to come back, had a scratch in the middle, and then ran a good second to call me captain. And then last time out, Devil's Time took the drop, got the win, and Lenny Zeal just had to come from too far out of it. Should get a good trip here in this compact field of seven. And Benny Bob, another horse I liked last time out, off the race two outs ago, where it just got beat by We Need VLTs, who controlled the pace. Last time, not a great effort, but with the additional Lasix, I like it a little bit more today. So I'm taking three, seven, and four. Now we're going to carry on to race number four, our other co-featured event. It's the Portales. For Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, they're going to go a mile on a 16th. Scratch number six, DARPA, and scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. Stretch, what about this one? Okay, yeah, two big, one really big scratch, and then, then the other scratch is important too. Um, so for me, it became a wide open race, a bit of a cat and mouse game on trying to figure out how it's going to go. I do think potentially that the the three, the four might end up uh, trying to go to the lead. You can look at last year, but I'm going to I'm going to start with my top selection, and that's the two. Um, last last time out was a little bit flat. Two back ran a, a great work, a uh, great race. Ended up uh, winning. Uh, we know the horse won't be on the lead. But I, I just liked it. I think that effort was so big that maybe bounced a little bit. Kind of a flat effort. Then gets the workout. I think it's going to get a nice stocking spot and, and try to make a, a late run down the stretch. So got to use that one. Then we'll go back to the one. Back-to-back uh, -back nice efforts. Should get the same kind of trip. Maybe might try to go uh, close to the pace. There are a couple races there that can show some speed from Oaklawn. You might want to, if, if maybe the, th the four doesn't go, there's a chance. And then, then I will mention the four as, as maybe the possible upset. Morning line's 30 to 1. Ignore that completely. I think you're going to be looking at eight, seven to 8 to 1 at the most because of the big scratch. So you have to basically ignore all the morning lines there. Re-handicap it if you handicapped it last night because of all the changes. I, I really think it's wide open, uh, but I'll go 2 one four. Yeah, I like a couple horses a lot in here. I do think Cypress Point is the speed of the race. Spun line, I think, will be the stalker chasing in there. But the horse I went to is number three, Big Stretch. I like this horse last time out. Made a power move around the turn and then just flattened out late down the lane and couldn't carry that move. Maybe pulled the trigger a little bit early. But Chavi and Chow, well, that was the first time he was on the horse. And I like when horses make moves like that, the jockey now knows what he has to work with and how he has to make his move. And I think Big Stretch, who jumped up last time out, is definitely good enough to win and will be sitting in a good position, probably closer to the inside than the wide trip. I also like number one, Texas Rain, knocking on the door in the last two. Second to spun line, two outs ago. Last time out, just a whisker away from catching Hidden Grace who went all the way gate to wire, but Texas Rain does draw inside in here, and that is important. And getting the extra added distance, I think the horse will like it, and I do like spun line. I just think the horse wasn't there that day, and that happens. It's just like uh, me and Stretch sometimes. We're in la-la land trying to pick winners, and uh, the track just doesn't want to favor us that day, but I think that might have been the spun line that day. So this horse can go back to that race two outs ago, and run that one. This horse can win this race. Lights out. But I like all inside horses. Three, one, and two.
Now we're carrying on to race number five, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, a $1,500 claimer for Phillies and Mayors three and up that are non-winners of the year. They're going to go five and a half furlong stretch. Who do you like? Yeah, a good reminder about the, the pick five and pick four because of the eight races. So, yes, the pick four starts here in race five. Uh, a good sequence. Uh, we've got the non-winners of the year, the absolute bottoms here for the Phillies and Mares. So I actually like a horse uh, a decent amount. Uh, you have to, I say that carefully for this level. <laughs> but uh, I think it's a wide open race. Every, again, one of these races that many of these horses, if they get back to their old form, win. So it wouldn't be that big of a surprise. Obviously, bottom levels, I'm looking for a bit of a price here. And, and what I really do like is this one horse. That last race really impressed me on how she came off the pace for the first time. She was always showing speed and then getting tired. And, and this last one, Kind of dropped a set back and, and made a real nice move. Morning line is 10 to 1. I don't think you're going to get that. I think I'm okay with about a 5 to 1. It's, a, for me, a must-use in the pick four sequence. And if I can get the 5 or 6 to 1, it's probably a win bet for me. Uh, just because I really that last race was the key. I do like the 6. Uh, could have been my top selection in here for sure. Throw out the last race. Uh, didn't get out of the gate. Uh, if, Forget that. And then, it, it, but at least the horse ran. So I like that. Got some racing stamina in there. Most pure speed in here for sure. Three out of nine at the distance. Six, six out of nine in the money. Lightly raced. This is a good time for these lightly raced horses where the other ones uh, can get in trouble. And then the last one, in case there is a duel in here between the one and the six, um, I've gone to the three as my third selection. Which question? It makes that sneaky drop from twenty five to fifteen hundred, and those twenty five sometimes have some bigger droppers in here. So if one and six hook sets it up for the three, one six three. Yeah, I think number six Catalina Dreamin' is the speed. Showed big speed first time out, got tired last time, never got out of the starting gate. But what I like about that race is a speed horse that didn't just fall apart after it was almost last in the field trailing usually they back up to get beat by 30 jockey just pulls them up at the back but this horse ran an even race only got beat by five and a quarter stalking leaders and this horse is just never there if it does go to the front end shows that same even race that it did and it looks like a rated six feet and five if it goes to the front Rates all the way around. I think Catalina Dreamin is your wire-to-wire -wire winner. I do like number two, Hey Hey Runaway also. Here's another horse dropping in from 2,500 to the 15. Hey Hey Runaway does have tactical speed. Two outs ago, ran a great race going seven furlongs. Made a big move, tired late down the lane. It hasn't showed a lot of speed this year sprinting, but in the past it has. You get Jorge Carreno and you get Jared Brown teaming up. So this is a good one to have. And I do like number one, Enhanced Finance. To the front, off the pace, really doesn't matter. This horse is sitting on a win at this level. So you got to throw it in. I'm six, two, and one. Now we're carrying on to race number six, a $2,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non to the year or non four lifers, only going five and a half furlong stretch. Same pick, it looks like. Well, I, I knew that was coming. I think we both did. We were on this horse last time out for the, the $5,000 level based on that first start um, here. Just was so impressive. And the last one maybe wasn't as good, but the figures are still there. Um, maybe regressed a little bit. If we can get somewhere between that first start and and a little bit above the, the last start, this horse is going to be super tough in here, I think. It's got to get position and make that nice move on the turn last time it did make a move those horses were just a little too good maybe for this horse so for me it's a, an absolute must use in here then i'm going to go to the seven on on an angle i don't get to use too often and then this is a horse that's coming out of they're calling it uh two two furlongs or kind of a quarter horse race and so it just sharpens horses for speed and so i watched the replay the jockey used them early trying to get that speed and ran on the whole time those are some tough races because usually you have some specialty horses in there. I think this horse is going to be sharp, uh, potentially can clear just based on that and just try to keep going. And, and I think five and a half furlongs is the key for this horse. It's going to be catch him if you can. And then I'll go to the two. The two has beaten the seven uh, a couple races back. 
that was at six furlongs. The horse is 10 of 16 in the money. Um, and just uh, got to use it in case the speed backs up. One thing of note, it's got the V. If you look at it in the program, that's avoided claim. There's a few ways, few different things on why it's avoided claim. If it's a, it's a certain kind of vet, then restrictions or something, that's not really a, a, a good thing, maybe a small concern, but uh, depending on the price, but I'll go one, seven, and two. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you. Dan's a rebel, powerful. First time out here at the Downs, won easily on a big, wide, sweeping move. Last time out, Drizzy went to the front, held on for the win, but that was for 5000 Now drops down to this 25 non non-two of the year. This is much softer than that last field that Danza Rebel did test. So I'm giving this horse the big nod in here. I think there is speed to run at because the four and the seven have it, but I think the seven's a little bit better with the speed, laughing Latinos. I like that race last time out again, going two furlongs. I like that this is five and a half and not six. That's why if it was six furlongs, I couldn't take Laughing Latinos and Carreno. Jared Brown has two of them in here. I follow the one that Carreno's on because that isn't a bad thing to do this year. And I also like number three, Senior Blair. If you're looking for a great long shot, this is it. The horse ran good against Dan's Rebel, only lost by two and a quarter lengths. And before that, ran a good third behind Call You Tomorrow, who's back in here as a six horse. Horse really hasn't run a bad race all year. If it does get the trip, could be a big price. So I'm going to give you one, three, and seven. Now we're carrying on to race number seven, a $5,000 claimer. Four three and up maidens are only going to go five furlong stretch. What do you have? Okay, well, yeah, another. this is from Monday as well. And interesting how we have switched picks. Yes, we have. So uh, well, there's one added horse in here from, from last time. We'll get to that. That was, the, that was the three. I actually had the one on top, and uh, I've decided to switch to the eight this week. And Kurt's gone the other way. So, yes, the horse is on the outside. They are only going five. I think if this horse runs back to that five furlong race, or, or sorry, runs back to two back, the five furlong and being wide won't that matter that much. The horse, I like the, the with uh, Dwight Lewis up, he's, he's really good at getting horses out and sending them. And, so, and I think if he can do that and just keep going a little bit wide, it won't matter because I think this horse is... is a little bit better than these. Um, yeah, I just like that matchup. And yes, one was my top selection, and I'm using both of them in there. So I'm interested to see why Kurt switched the pick. If the eight falters, maybe the one can take over. And then the last one, I'll enter, uh, use the three. This horse was not entered in, in last Monday's, which, which is, isn't a bad thing. So the horse is kind of set on uh, the pattern that he might like. Cuts back. And uh, there's a couple of the races at very second race. That would be good enough to win in here. So I'll give you eight, one, and three. Yeah, I ended up switching to Sealy Caper. First time out, the horse just came here. I gave it an excuse for that one. Then ran a good race against Bro Code, cutting out the fractions. Last time, it was a dropper get up early, getting the job done. But I like the way Steely Caper chased every step of the way and didn't go give up any ground and was easily ahead of Devil's Time, the third place finisher who came back to win rather easily. And with that inside draw of the one hole and Antonio Whitehall, who did have a good day on Wednesday, I'm looking for Steely Caper to try and stalk the early lead and get him. I do like Warbucks on the outside. Last time out, I watched this replay again, and uh, the horse never showed me what it did first time out, so that's why I ended up switching over. I had to watch it multiple times and see, was there anything I missed? Well, there wasn't. Horse just ran terrible. But two outs ago, it ran good enough. So that's why it's in second. And I'm even giving the first time starter, number seven, Forgotten Son. This horse does have some good works. A nice gate work two outs ago in Canterbury in 48 and two. Some good breeding on it out of the line of David. Excellent Lisa had eight wins. So this could be an interesting one as a six-year-old making its debut. So I'm one, eight and seven. Now we're carrying on to race number eight, a $7,500 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up, they're going to tackle the one mile and stretch. Not an easy way to cap off the evening. No, again, this is another one from Monday, but this time we get two added in here. So we're now at 10 horses. How good is this? I'm going with the, one of the horses that got added in here. I like the spot for him. Makes the key drop that uh, Kurt's going to agree with me on this one. A triple drop. A tri triple drop. 
but just a nice, not a giveaway horse kind of drop. So any of those uh, races, especially two back, puts this horse absolutely right in the mix. Should get a great trip. Uh, I'll go to the one. This horse was my top selection last week, but now that the three moved in, I've got to keep this horse. I think that there's a chance that this horse might just try for the lead. I talked about it on Monday, how this horse was right up with the speed and was making a move and then had to wait. If you really look back at uh, that, some of the races, it is a little bit lower, but who knows? With the right, this rider, he likes to send them. Could be right there. Uh, worth a shot for me. We're getting 25 to 1, maybe not that high. We'll get, but, uh, and then the four is in the claiming game. We go back and forth. Um, this was also added in there. Um, it just uh, might be his, his time to be in there. Wide open race, 3 1 and 4. Yeah, I went to the newcomer also, Rail Splitter. That drop is absolutely huge. If this horse went to the first level, me and Stretch would have been all over it. But instead of going to the first level, optional 10, it goes down to 75. So much easier than the first level. That other horses have been getting beat at. And Rail Splitter was getting bet at the second level. I think this drop in class is absolutely huge. So he gets my top play. Number 10, Rydum, was my top selection without rail splitter in here draws outside post position number 10 but i don't think that'll matter because the horse is a horse that has a little bit of early speed to get out get positioning and was a great ride by siobhan bell last time out sitting behind the speed on the rail moving out taking over and drawing off i think this horse is just getting better and i like number two maybe sometime why? Because the horse is dropping from first level to 7,500. Did get beat by House Limit, Majestic Street, and Dazzling Mischief. But that was sprinting. I think this horse is way better going around the ground. Did get beat by Leisman Good so far and Monster Domus. But we see Monster Domus come back to win at the first level allowance. So this is much easier for maybe some time. So I'm 3, 10, and 2. Good luck with all your wagers here this evening. And I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing. And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's eight race car to racing. Turning your programs to race number one, our featured event, the 34th running of the CTHS sales stake. There's only some overweights in race one. Now turning your programs to race number two, in race two, again, just a couple overweights. Now turning your programs to race number three. Again, just some overweights. Now turning your programs to race number four, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. This is a co-featured event, the Portales for older fillies and mares. Scratch number six, DARPA, and scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. Once again in race number four, scratch the six, DARPA, and scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. The jackpot pick five carryover, just over $133,000. Now turning your programs to race number five, 
kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Again, just some overweights. Now turning your programs to race number six. Just one overweight, and it's on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs to race number seven. Again, just a few overweights. Turning your programs to race number eight, our jackpot high five race of the evening. There are no changes. The jackpot high five carryover just under $94,000. Well, another absolute gorgeous day for racing here in Winnipeg. <laughs> what is that stretch? Well, it's mainly sunny or mainly stretchy. You're just But where off. did I get the cowboy hat from? Uh, I well, don't own a cowboy hat. Well, Even I'm, though I've worked at the track for over 35 years, I do not have a cowboy hat. Yeah, that's one of the Maybe better, they should get me one. Maybe. That's one of the better graphics. I'm, it's nice that they let you in the picture, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like I'm in Saskatchewan or something. <laughs> mainly sunny skies. The temperature, 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And the track is listed as fast, a fast racetrack for this evening's eight race car to racing. And we're going to kick it off right here in race number one, the 34th running of the CTHS sales stakes. And they'll go to post in 19 minutes. Thank you for joining us this evening and be sure to play Winnipeg's ultimate chase the ace game with prizes for more than just the jackpot ace. Tickets for chase the ace are just five dollars and available in the lobby until 9 p.m. The draw takes place at about 9 30 and the current jackpot is over four thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Now on to racing. If you're new to racing, make sure to stop by and see Shannon and Brad at the Fan Education Center located on the main floor. Also, that's the place to open a free betting account at hpibet.com to bet on the races on your phone. That's right, on your phone or computer. And what's more, if you bet 100, you get 100. Some conditions do apply.
And welcome down to the paddock for race number one. We're kicking off our week of racing with a stake race. It's the 34th running of the CTHS sales stake. They're going to go six furlongs for $40,000 stretch. Who do you like in the opener? All right, yes. Take two on a few races today. Let's start with uh, the same selection as I had before the... The scary Kurt Clouds came in. <laughs> uh, and that's Russian Pearl. Uh, I like this horse for, for many reasons. One is I like the extra furlong that this horse is going to get. I think that's going benefit, to benefit her because I think she, she's a closing type where last time she had to chase the lone speed. I don't think there's lone speed. And, and even uh, when you're only going five and you, you don't have huge uh, early pace, you've got to kind of sacrifice. But this horse kept coming, this filly kept coming and grinding the entire way. So a repeat, a, a repeat uh, effort on there. So I, I've, got to, uh, I've got to give this horse another chance. I know the horse to beat is the five, but uh, it's definitely worth a shot. I get a workout as well on August 17th, so... Um, yeah, and Russian Pearl ran a lot better. They had blinkers last time out, and that seemed to change the running style, made it a little more forward. So, yes, I like Russian Pearl also, but I like number five. I love my life. This is a horse that won that race so easily last time out, hit the front end. Chowie and Chow, he just sat there the whole race, and it did draw off to win by six. The time was snappy in 59-2. and two. I don't think this horse will have a problem getting the six furlongs today. Carpa K, the two horse, might show some early speed and make I Love My Life go a little faster. But if they don't, I think this is the horse to catch. And that's why the even money on the board. Yeah, so uh, absolutely. How about the one? Tell us about the one. Well, Private Frank, uh, the dad going commando, a champion sire here in Manitoba. The mom, in spite of success, she had four wins in 20 starts. Over $50,000 in earnings, has three half siblings. Uh, yes, it's me, Johnny G, a winner of five races. Spanky's Bourbon, who's won nine. And in spite of success, uh, also had spite, spice, uh, spite of success. <laughs> there we go, I got it out. Who was a three time winner. So the whole family does like to win, but it just might be tough getting the six furlongs. First time out, but some good works. Yeah, the good works, you, you, you made the call. That's six furlongs for a first-time starter that's a two-year-old. It, it's a bit of an ask, but it'll be interesting to see how, how uh, he runs. Uh, my third selection is the three. Uh, the horses run evenly. Uh, couldn't beat uh, either one of these horses, but they're young horses. Has a nice five-furlong work coming in, just a breezing one. Getting the extra distance. 
certainly can can be right there for you. So uh, somebody to consider there for sure. Yeah, another horse that I like for third. That's number two, Carpake. Carpake first time out showed some good early speed and then tired down the lane. But that wasn't a bad race at all. Arrogance had showed that it could rally from off the pace and uh, ended up getting second in there. Well played. Had one start in Alberta and then came here. Was beaten by a stakes place horse that came back to win a stake race right after. So Carpake, I think this horse will move forward off that race. And that's why I have it as my third selection stretch. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number one, stretch. Yep, I'm, you know, this a little is bit, bit of this, a little, little bit, of, bit that. of that. This is how I, I make some bets. I'm taking a chance on the four horse, uh, getting a nice price, but I do know that the five is going to uh, could be right there. So 20 to win on the four. $10 exactor box, 4-5. I can hit both bets. If it comes 5-4, I'll make a few dollars in the end anyway. Well, I'm kind of doing the same you thing are, as yeah. you, but I'm going to the tractor bin like I usually do. I'm doing a $10 tractor. I'm taking 4-5, four, 4-5, five, four, five, and the 2 for third. A $1 ticket costs you 2 bucks. I'm doing a $10 for 20 Good luck with all your wagers here in race one, and we'll see you back for race number two. Cinnaboy Downs is proud to present our featured event here in race number one. It's the 34th running of the CTHS sales stake. They're going to go six furlongs for $40,000. Number one is Private Frank, owned by Jerry Lambert and Lynn Matthews, trained by Tom Gardaby Jr. with Sheldon Chickeness. Number two is Carpa K. Owned by Anderson Livestock, Hillside Farms, and WRA Ventures. Trained by Stephen Gaskin with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Double Barrel Delight. Owned by HU Thoroughbreds and True North Thoroughbreds. Trained by Michael Nault with Stanley Chady Jr. Number four is Russian Pearl. Owned by Larry Falloon and Ron Wiley. Trained by Devin Giddens with Dwight Lewis. 
Rounding out our field is number five, I Love My Life. Owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lee Spruett with Chavi and Chow. Following the running of the CTHS sales stake, Assiniboia Downs is very pleased to have on hand Wayne Anderson, Vice President of the CTHS Manitoba Division, to make a presentation to the winning connections. Post time for the CTHS sales stakes. They'll go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, here we go, kicking off the week. We're going six furlongs for the youngsters or the two-year-olds in a stake race. I've landed on the four as my top selection. Uh, she's going to have to run down the five, no question about it. But I think this horse is improving, getting better. The extra distance is going to help her. She's going to sit just off and see if we can catch the five. The five is might have some pressure. It's going to be catcher if you can. And if you need a third horse, the longest shot on the board is the three. That could be the complete your trifecta. Four, five, and three. Kurt. Yeah, Stretch, I do like the current favorite. Number five, I love my life. What an impressive debut winner, winning by over six lengths, going wire to wire. But it was the way Chavi and Chow rode it. He did not move a muscle, winning that race easily. I think this horse is the one to beat, but I definitely respect number four, Russian Pearl, who's getting better each and every time. They put blinkers on, and that improved the early speed. And I like the two Carpique to finish in third, so I'll give you five, four, and two. Good luck here in race one.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a late scratch to report, and this the first race. Scratch number two, Carpa K. Once again, a late scratch to report, and this the first race. Scratch number two, Carpa K. If you did wager on number two, Carpa K, there will be a complete refund if you use it in your early daily double or early pick three. The favorite at post time will be substituted. Late scratch in this, the first race, scratch the two, Carpa K. Private Frank, the first time starter, is the first one to go in. Next up, Double Barrel Delight. Two left to load. Russian Pearl's turn. And now just waiting on the one to two favorite. I love my life to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off in the 34th running of the CTHS sales stake. Breaking on the outside and going straight to the lead. That's I love my life. Who now has the early lead by a length and a half. To the outside, Russian Pearl going three wide. Private Frank on the inside, close up in third. And Double Barrel Delight is the trailer. Three lengths off the lead. The opening quarter, 23 and two. And I love my life is loving it on the front end with the lead by a length and a half still running easy in an all-out drive from second russian pearl private frank back to third and double barrel delight is the trailer the half 46 and three i love my life it's the head of the lane and has the lead by three russian pearl not giving up in second eating up ground i love my life does respond and at the 16th pole i love my life is loving it and is gonna win the 34th running of the cths sales stake Russian Pearl was second best, third to Double Barrel Delight, and fourth to Private Frank.
The Stewart's supposed to number five, I Love My Life, as the race winner. Second goes to number two, Russian Pearl. Third to number three, Double Barrel Delight. And fourth to number one, Private Frank. They went the opening quarter 23 and two, the half 46 and three. Time for the six furlongs, 113 and four. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the 34th running of the CTHS sales stakes. That's number five, I Love My Life. I Love My Life is a dark bear, brown gelding, two years old by Kentucky Bear. Out of the mare, midnight shadow by trajectory. Owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lee Pruitt, and ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the six furlongs. One thirteen and four. Number five, I Love My Life, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Cam Ziprick and Charles Fulliard. Assiniboy Downs was very pleased to have on hand Wayne Anderson, the vice president of the CTHS Manitoba division, to make the presentation to the winning connections. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. There are no changes. Kicking off another pick three here in race number two. As I mentioned earlier, ladies and gentlemen, this is your ultimate GCA's place, which does raise money for the final furlong organization that helps find good homes for retired racehorses. You can not only win the jackpot by picking the Ace of Diamonds, but you'll win $100 if you pick either Joker and $25 for every other card. Tickets are just $5 each and available in the lobby. And take note that final furlong coffee mugs also available for a minimum $10 donation at guest services.
And welcome back to Allen Paddock for race number two for this allowance. Optional $15,000 claimer for the boys three and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number one. Stretch, I love my life. Did love it. And uh, what a nice little pony. Taking nothing away from Russian Pearl, who I think this is the one that's going to like going to rut of ground. Agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. The she uh, He cleared and, and just kept going and looked good. Um, looked like the, the four was maybe lugging in a little bit, was a bit hard to handle. But you're right. I think as it stretches out and we get to see uh, that going. But, hey, it's great to watch. Unfortunately, with the, the scratch, was only four of them. But uh, we, we got some nice Manitoba We babies. do. Absolutely. All right. On to race number two, Stretch. What do you got? Okay, so a replay. Uh, this this is the race was scheduled for Monday, um, last last Monday. So they rewrote it, and we got the same six. I went with the same picks in here, and so Julie's on camera today. So let's find the six. There we go. Thank you, Julie. And uh, uh, we talked about this uh, uh, this horse having a few seconds and and thirds, but the last two races. I think the distance kind of uh, hurt him a little bit. Just doesn't have that finishing kick as much as, as uh, he can. Uh, I think the cutback helps. I think there's going to be a bit of pace to run at. This horse is very classy. It's just sitting on trying to find the right field in here. That race at um, the free press got cut off a little bit in there and uh, was closing. Wasn't going to win the race, that's for sure, but was right there. That six furlong was against Del Vecchio in a really fast run race. There's no Del Vecchio in here. I, I think this horse is going to be right there. We'll see it three to one, I think is more than fair value. Yeah, that's the race I'm looking at. If Mr. Dazzle runs that one, then he is the top play, I think, in here. I also like number three, Market King. Market King stormed on the scene, winning the nifty hanging on by a neck over Real Grace, and then ran a good second in the free press where Real Grace slithered up the rail and stole that win away. And then going into the RJ Spears, well, tough breaks up for everybody out of the gate, but I don't think Market King really wanted that distance. Has some time off in between. If it does run back to those previous races, big shot in here, but there is some other speed with number one house limit and number four tap master. Yeah, absolutely. That, that you mentioned my my uh, I do uh, Market King almost was my top selection. I'll mention my third selection is is the one as is yours. I was impressed with that last race showing speed. I thought there was a bunch of speed in here, including that dazzle and mischief was in there. And uh, yes, the the other ones that you mentioned do have speed. I thought Tapmaster is, is has speed, but not house limit speed. So I think potentially maybe the one. Could get loose and if gets has to break well from the rail, which is always important at the six furlongs. And that's always the one post position at a Cinnaboy Downs that you got to be worried about the horse uh, breaking well. Yeah, for whatever reason, it, it's just I guess how the the setup of the the track is for whatever it can be. So it's a good competitive race. I I think there the three certainly can win. I, if you're looking at the value, which you always have to do, just because you like a horse, you want oh I got to bet him to win. Four to five for me is a little bit low. Nine to two is a fair value, I think, on house limit of, of where it is. I know the morning line's eight to one. I thought that was a, a little high for me. But, uh, yeah, any others to add there, Kurt? Yeah, I, I do like number four, Tap Masters, currently at five to one. This is a horse that seems to be getting better with each and every start. Only started at the downs four times. In the nifty, the horse was way too far back to get a piece of it, but only got beat by three and three quarters in the end. Had a little bit of a rough trip going six furlongs the next time out, but that non two other than battled every step of the way and stuck around. And then last time out, went to the front and said, see you later to everybody. So if you're looking for a horse that's on the uphill, on the upswing, tap master, definitely it. And you're getting good odds. At six to one. Yeah, absolutely. And if you take a look, that horse has won four races at the distance where some of the others haven't won our, our top selections and, and second selection. So there is some concern there. But uh, yeah, four wins, that's always a big thing. Uh, the Stone Cafe is, has been running better, improving. You're talking about horses that are improving. Had the back class last year 
and then seemed to be kind of uh, gets claimed, run a bit, ran a big race, and then against Rydham, who I believe you like in the last race. I do. It's my second selection. Absolutely. So this horse, ah, 17 to 1, will need an absolute trip uh, to get there, but you just like horses this time of year and the rest of the meet that are running well. Yeah, and the lone three-year-old in the field, that's number two gold special. One at the uh, allowance level, but that was straight three-year-olds three outs ago. Ran third to Brody Streak and then ran second to Brody, Brody Streak previous to that. I think gold special likes sprinting today. I think it didn't like the mile and a mile and an eighth distances. And the company was pretty tough with red knobs, great escape, and pray for peace. But this isn't much easier as it does go against older horses and some pretty solid ones. But gold special, who knows? Maybe the three-year-old just might be able to kick it into gear with all that air in the lungs from the mile and an eighth and fool everybody. But I just can't take it today. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number two, Stretch. All right, we're going to play a little pick three here. Um, I think it is. Uh, Beth, I need your help again. That should be one, three, six. Yeah, you're using picks from last Monday, uh, yeah, Stretch. So I, uh, I am. So it, the $3 pick three, one, three, six with three, with one, two, four. Thank you, Beth. Unless the four wins, then I'll mean that I meant to have the four. But anyway, three dollar ones, twenty seven. You can make it a dollar for nine. Yeah, I only know that because I grab Monday's program and it's right beside me here. And myself, I'm going a ten dollar exactor box three and six because I still have money left over from the last race as the two was scratched late. So that'll cost twenty bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number two, and we'll see you back for race three. are on the track for race number two. They're going to go six furlongs for $18,500. Number one is House Limit. Owned by Avery Erfel, trained by Jerry Gorno with Sheldon Chickeness. Number two is Gold Special. Owned by Bill Meikle and Wind Dancer Sable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Number three is Market King, owned by Ira Donald and King Couture, trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Number four is Tap Master, owned by Kenneth Amther, trained by Gordon Amther with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is Stone Cafe, owned and trained by Dale Zawiesliak with Chavi and Chow. Running out the field is number six, Mr. Dazzle, Owned by Kyle and Megan Hebert, trained by Mike Taphorn 
with Ronald Alley. Post time for race number two, four minutes away. And ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs to race number seven, we have a late scratch to report. In race number seven, scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. Once again, race number seven, a late scratch, scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. Two minutes to post time at ASD. Here we go. We got the boys going six furlongs and an allowance optional for fifteen thousand. What a competitive race! Look at the betting board. We've got four horses on uh, between two and four to one. I've landed on the six, getting great value at three to one. I think this horse, Mr. Dazzle, is going to get a nice trip behind some early pace battle up front. Wait and make the, his patented middle move and take over. Others to consider is the three. A lot of class there. Has one a stake, could be there. The one is speed on the rail as well. It's going to be a great race, six, three, and one. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on the great race in here. I took Mr. Dazzle, because I think the one and three are the predominant speed of the race. They're gonna battle it out with Mr. Dazzle in a stalking roll and pouncing on him. Yes, hasn't won at the distance in 13 tries. Only has four seconds and a third, but I think it's gonna set up really nice. And I do like number three, Market King, as his horse was a stake winner early on and stakes place in the next start. This might be the absolute perfect spot from a red hot barn. I'm giving you a six and three. Good luck here in race two.
Ghost Time! House Limit, the first to step into the starting eight. Gold Special is in. Next up, the cold favorite, currently at nine to five, Market King. Tapmaster now walks up and in. Just two left to load. Stone Cafe. And just waiting on the current favorite at eight to five. That's Mr. Dazzle. They're all set, they're at the post. And they're off. From the middle, Market King shows a little bit of early speed with House Limit. Moving up to pressure from the inside, three wide. That's Tapmaster, four wide, Stone Cafe. On the outside, five wide, Mr. Dazzle. Only three lengths off it in the early trailer. Gold Special, five lengths off the lead. A log jam on the front end through an opening quarter of 23 and three. Market King on the inside. Mr. Dazzle has moved early and now gone up by a length. Market King is back to second. Back in third, Tapmaster starting to roll house limit. Fourth on the inside, then it's Stone Cafe and Gold Special. They hit the head of the lane, the half 46 and one. Mr. Dazzle with the lead. Market King coming back on on the outside. House Limit up the rail, 16th of a while to go. And this one's in the books. Mr. Dazzle is gonna win by four. Market King hangs on for second, close for third between House Limit and Tapmaster. The Stewart's supposed to number six, Mr. Dazzle. As your race winner, second goes to number three, Market King. A photograph has been called to determine the show position. They went the opening quarter 23 and three. The half 46 and one. Time for the six furlongs, one, 11 and three. Results of the photo show number one, House Limit, finishing third, fourth to number four, Tapmaster. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner 
For race number two, that's number six, Mr. Dazzle. Mr. Dazzle is a Bay Gelding, six years old, by Adios Charlie, out of the Mayor Holy Angel, by Chapel Royale. Owned by Kyle and Megan Hebert, trained by Mike Tamporn, and ridden to victory by Ronald Alley. Time for the six furlongs, one eleven and three. Race two is official in the upcoming third race. There are no changes. Kicking off another pick three. Here in race number three, they'll go to post in 17 minutes. Are you new to Assiniboy Downs? Then check out the 140 VLTs located on the second level. They're open all day, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m.
Welcome back down the paddock for race number three for this Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred maiden race for three-year-olds and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number two. Mr. Dazzle came to play today. Yeah, the, the race, uh, sometimes we get it right there. Kurt, we called it, and I thought there'd be a move on Mr. Dazzle, and that's what I've seen him over the years uh, run. And when you go a mile, some horses just don't like, they make that move and they just can't finish because it's a little bit too long. They timed it beautifully, made the move. There's a bit of a battle and then uh, just took over. And the class, there you go, the kind of the class took over. Yeah, and maybe Ronald Alley, look at the way that Jorge Carreno has been doing it. And that's where he's been making his moves about the three eighths pull, swooping them and lassing to the wire. Great ride by Ronald Alley. Okay, on to race number three, Stretch. Who do you like? Well, I am going to go with uh, the favorite in here at, at four to five. I, I'd be searching to go elsewhere. I could make cases for the other ones, but I just think uh, this last race went pretty fast for this level and then did run out of gas and you made a good point on the on the kind of the quick turnaround and that's fair adds the the sharp looking blinkers look at those blinkers there um that's worth it then rick wise has has uh claimed the horse he's going to make sure this horse is as sharp as it can be there is a little bit of un speed inside but i think there's not enough and this horse can keep going and for me, that's that's the difference. I, I'm not a big fan of horses that go off at 50 cents on the dollar and lose. But as mentioned on ASD Live, this is my last chance for this one that you'll see my as my top selection. Yeah, I like that this horse added those blinkers and gets a little more rest than it had last time out. There was only five days in between running. Another horse I like in here, number seven, Lenny Zeal. I really like that first start out of the year. The horse got in a little bit of trouble, finished well to a horse that went wire to wire in cheers to mom, then was off for uh, about six weeks, came back and ran a good second at Call Me Captain. Last time out, got shuffled to the back and rallied well down the lane. Didn't lose by much to the three. And I think Lenny's deal is going to run his best race today. So that's why I like him second best. And that's why he's nine to two on the board. Yeah, I, I'm with you. That was mine. And then the four is the other one. It's kind of the same type of horse. It's going to stalk. We know what this horse can kind of run the speed. And and so if the three can't last, then then it's uh, the four and the seven. Two back was a, was a nice race. Uh, lost by a nose. So we need VLTs. And uh, it wasn't a fast run race, but it has a workout. Adds Lasix. They're going kind of all in here. Uh, to see what this horse is made of, and we'll see. We, uh, you mentioned off camera that speed's looking pretty good. Now, the first race, the favorite, went gate to wire. They kind of stayed the order. But the, the last race, yes, the six came off the pace, but the three hung around and the one hung around when there was no other movement. So that was a good quality field, and that's what I kind of look at. The, the chasers and the duelers didn't back right up, and the deep closers get, got there. So... We'll see how it goes. This is going to tell us a lot, I think. But yeah, previous to last week, trying to find a wire-to-wire -wire winner was uh, easier finding uh, money in the grandstand. So uh, <laughs> now at least these horses can go. Take a look at number six, Cody to Cowboy, a four-year-old by Quest. Quest was a, had six wins from seven and a half to a mile and a 16th. Made a little over three quarters of a million dollars. The mom, it's Molly's day. Only ran once. But ran second for maiden allowance to a dead favorite that day. And that was a good race. This one does have a really nice work, kind of sneaky. 48 and 2 on July 9th. And is taking money on the board at 5 to 1. I'd definitely throw this one in your exotics. Yeah, I agree with you. I, as you do, I kind of compare the, the workout times to some of the 
fractions that these other horses have gone, and, and that would put this horse right there. My only concern, there's a few gaps in there, but it's not a tough, tough field, so maybe today is the day a, a firster wins this level. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number three, Stretch. Look at that, a page out of my book, but I got the winning ticket. Uh, we could both win it. We yeah. could both. We could both we could, win it. Uh, but I'm gonna. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Uh, Ten dollar tri wheel. Three with four seven with four seven. Hey, if, if I get a bigger price, I might just let it ride on the three to win. But that's what it is. You can play a one dollar wheel and only spend two bucks and take a shot. That last race tri paid eighteen dollars for a dollar, and it was the favorite. And so. we both picked it straight in there, but uh, we didn't better try. All right, and here I also have a ten dollar try. I keep the three on top, sipping to impress with the seven Lenny Zeal. And I took four and six for third. That'll cost you 20. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number three. And we'll see you back for race four, kicking off jackpot. Pick five wagering with the Portales for older fillies and mares. are on the track for race number three they're gonna go six furlongs for ten thousand dollars number one is ama star owned by christy dejarlis trained by ryan dejarlis with leroy nelson number two is i'll be your handyman owned by pink cloud racing trained by courtney ross with antonio whitehall number three is zipping to impress Owned and trained by Rick Wise with Jorge Carreño. Number four is Benny Bob. Owned by Bob Taphorn. Trained by Mike Taphorn with Neville Stevenson. Number five is Little Deputy. Owned by Pink Cloud Racing. Trained by Courtney Ross with Ronald Alley. Number six is Cody the Cowboy. Owned by Vela K. Butler. Trained by Tiffany Husbands with Chavi and Chow. Running out the field is number seven, Lenny Zeal, owned by Trent Height, trained by Tom Gardaby Jr. with Sheldon Chickenass. Post time for race number three, four minutes away.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going six furlongs, uh, maidens, horses that have not won a race lifetime. Yes, the three is the big favorite and deservedly so. Has shown uh, some nice races at a higher class. Did lose last time, but was pressured. Adds blinkers, gets a different trainer to give him a shot to win it. I think this horse can go gate to wire. If the horse can get the distance, should be tough. The closers are your four and the seven. They'll be sitting back and try to close late. That's who you have to decide. The three can't make it. Three, seven, four. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number three, zipping to impress. Only five days in between races last time out. Now has a little more time off, a little bit of equipment change, and a little bit of an easier race. So I think it's his race to lose. I do like number seven, Lenny Zeal, for second. If you're looking for a long shot to throw in, throw in number six, Cody to Cowboy. That was a really nice work back on July the 9th of 48 and two for a bottom level Manitoba bread. So if this horse runs second or third, it'll bump up your tries. Good luck here in race three. Come on, Star, the first one into the starting gate. I'll be your handyman has moved in. Next up, the four to five favorite, zipping to impress.
From the middle, Benny Bob goes in. Little Deputy's turn. Now just two left to load. The first time starter, Cody the Cowboy. And just waiting on Lenny Zeal to the outside. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, zipping to impress. Zips up to grab the early lead by two. On the inside, Amma's star in second. Settled back behind them in third, Cody the Cowboy with Benny Bob to his inside. Another length and a half back to Little Deputy and Lenny Zeal running as a pair. And I'll be your handyman. A lot of work to do right now. Has 15 lengths to make up. The opening quarter, 23 and 3. And zipping to impress. Still sustaining that lead of two lengths. I'm a star in second, Cody the Cowboy. Moving up in third, Benny Bob. Starting to roll the half, 47 and three. They hit the head of the lane and zip into impress. Has widened the margin now to five, six, seven lengths. Rallying up the inside, Benny Bob to the outside, Cody the Cowboy, and I'm a star, but this is all. Zipping to impress, going to win by seven. Very close for a second between Emma Star and Benny Bob. Fourth went to Cody the Cowboy. The Stewart's supposed to number three, zipping to impress as your race winner. A photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 23 and 3, the half 47 and 3. Time for the six furlongs, 1 13 and 4. Results of the photo show number one, I'm a star. Better say in second, third goes to number four, Benny Bob, and fourth to number six, Cody the Cowboy. Now in the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number three, that's number three, Zippin' to Impress. Zippin' to Impress is a big gelding, three years old, by Going Commando, out of the mare, CZ Bell, by City Zip. Owned and trained by Rick Wise, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreno. Time for the six furlongs, one thirteen and four. 
Number three, zipping to impress, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Kelly Halliday and Kansas Back Farms. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race. The Portales Overnight Stake for older fillies and mares. Kicking off jackpot, pick five wagering. Scratch number six, DARPA. And scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. Once again, in this is the fourth race, scratch the six, DARPA. And scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. And we'll carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five. Turning your programs to race number seven, scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. That's in race number seven, scratch the six, Twisted Oliver. Jackpot pick five wagering here in race number four, the Portalis. And it does kick off, jackpot pick five. Well, the Cineboy Nouns is pleased to announce that in the month of August, Mondays are family fun days. Each Monday evening from 6.30 to 9.30, kids can enjoy free bouncy castles, face painting, and live entertainment. Once again, that's the month of August where every Monday is family fun day. Also, this is the first leg of the 20 cent wager called the jackpot pick five coming up here in race number four if your ticket is the only correct one picking the winners of races four to eight you will win the whole jackpot and when there's more than one winner a consolation is paid out and the jackpot keeps growing the current jackpot carryover over one hundred thirty three thousand dollars Well, you better hurry. You only have 15 minutes left to give yourself a chance to go home with more than $4,200 in your pocket if you do get drawn to play Chase the Ace and you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Get your tickets at guest services in the lobby for just $5. And remember, you're helping support Final Furlong that helps find good homes for retired racehorses.
And welcome back to Ellen Paddock for race number four. Time to kick off jackpot pick five wagering with the Portal. It's an overnight stake for older fillies and mares. Scratch number six, DARPA. And scratch number seven, Hidden Grace. Quick look back at race number three, Stretch, zipping to impress. Well, big favorite, but one easy. Yeah, didn't disappoint. You know, we've said, you know, favorites are winning uh, over 30% of the time. Sometimes you try to beat them and sometimes you just can't. I couldn't find anything in there to, to beat him. So, um, yeah, a big effort on the one that, as we just talked about, that might show that... Uh, Blinker's that, off, though. Blinker's that off. That was a good change on Amistar. Sure, and that's all it takes, a little bit of a change for that level. Also, how there was not really any closing, so... The Speed is doing really, really well, well so far this evening. In the three races, we will see if that carries throughout the evening. All right, on to race number four, Stretch. Who do you like? Yeah, very uh, interesting and competitive uh, stake race or overnight entry. It's fine. Um, it's it's not as easy as the, the public's making the one as the favorite. I landed on the two as my top selection. Julie's found the two in the paddock. Uh, a couple things. Two back was a really, really good race. A bit of trouble, still won. Has always been uh, right around uh, the money coming into that race. And then last race was a, a little bit flat. And so I'm going to throw that race out and say, okay, it was just one of those too big of an effort and kind of bounced a bit. And then uh, the trainer, Jared Brown, decides, let's have a nice breezing workout to keep this horse sharp. Should get a good trip. Probably sit, depending on what happens up front, but if there's a bat pace battle, watch out. I think the horse is going to be pretty tough. So that is my top selection. Of note, they're going a mile and 16. So many of these, uh, well, they haven't gone that distance this year yet. So Yeah, another horse I do like in here, number three, Big Stretch. Yeah, stretched it out to a mile last time out, but made a power move to go right behind Hidden Grace and then ran evenly after that. Only got beat by a length and a quarter. And I love that power move that Big Stretch made. Chavi and Chow, that was his first start on the horse. So he kind of figured out a little bit more about it. I think he's going to be sitting close in here to the lead, not too far off. And that same kind of move, that can definitely be a winning move in here. And that's why he's my top play just off that big move last time. And that's fair. There, there's a, yeah, it shows in the charts, or it shows in the charts, but you have to watch the race. It's a, such a good call on that. Don't disagree for, for many reasons. I've picked him uh, when he's won. We both did on that one. I'll land on the one horse here, Texas Rain, who happens to be the favorite. Why did you pick him for second stretch? This is a horse that I usually pick to win. <laughs> You're right. 15 starts, nine <laughs> seconds. No wins in the last two years, but, uh, you know, the horse has only made 80000 Yeah, <laughs> completely, completely. Yeah, so the, the angle is, is there a horse in here that can get controlling speed? I think it's... A, there's a chance between two horses here, the one horse or the four horse. Let's start with Texas Rain. And this horse, if you look back at Oaklawn Park, has shown speed before. Last time sat a little farther back. Two back was that a bit of a... Things happened on that first turn. A couple horses kind of checked and steadied. So there is a chance, but he is three seconds, four out of five in second uh, for that one. So uh, it's my second choice, but I don't like the price. Yeah, another horse to look at, the longest shot on the board, number five, Ain't She Darlin'. Hasn't been able to get a win since arriving to the downs. Has been a fringe player, beaten by Spunline two outs ago, Texas Rain, Hidden Grace, and then again beaten by Hidden Grace, Texas Rain, and Big Stretch last time out. Did have trouble in both of those starts, and big trouble two outs ago, where it did clip heels into the first turn. If you're looking for a horse to maybe uh, really be an upsetter, this might be the five. It, it could be. Uh, just to go back to the four horses, my third quickly. This horse was showing speed last year in these similar stake races. Didn't Lost to Miss Imperial. That's when Miss Imperial could not be beat. Oh, she was just way too good. Yeah, and so there's a chance that this horse just uh, might send. Jerry's got two horses, the four and the five. I, can, I think we can expect to see one of them uh, on the lead. No doubt about it. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number four. Jackpot pick five times stretch. What do you got? All right, here we go. I'm going to take uh, one, two, three, four in the first leg. 
and then one, two, three, four, six in the second. First two legs are pretty tough. Then just the one in the seven. Using a price horse, one and eight in the seventh, and then one and three in the eighth. You forgot my long shot in the last, Kurt. Well, that's okay because I got a lot of others in that last. I got one, two, three in here, and you took four out of five in the first leg. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a. I know it's the absolutely yeah, yeah. better mistake. Maybe I should just key the five. Yeah, and then I got two, four, six, seven in the third leg, race number six. I keyed the one. Dan's a rebel. And then I took one seven eight, rounded out with two three six and ten. That'll cost you twenty eight eighty. Good luck with all your wagers here in race four, and we'll see you back for race five, kicking off fifty thousand dollar guaranteed pick four wagering. on the track for race number four it's the portalis overnight stake they're gonna go a mile and a 16th for twenty four thousand dollars number one is texas rain owned by murray duncan and the estate of gerald b stewart trained by murray duncan with stanley chady jr number two is spun line owned by ira donald and king couture trained by jared brown with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Big Stretch, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault, with Chavi and Chow. Number four is Cypress Point, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Sheldon Chickeness. Number five is Ain't She Darling, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Praven Badry. Number six, DARPA, and number seven, Hidden Grace, were scratched. Following the running of the Portales, Assiniboy Downs is pleased to have on hand Bruce Stratton, a longtime supporter of racing here in Manitoba and a close personal friend of Charlie Smith and Terry Props. The Portales kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. They go to post in four minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD.
right, we've got the girls going a mile and a sixteenth in a, a very competitive uh, stake race. It is down to five. The public's got it between one, two, and three. I'm going to give you the two spun line, two back. This horse beat many of these uh, girls in here, stalked and made a nice move. I think the same thing can happen. Yes, the last race wasn't very good. Has a workout coming in. Others to consider that could be controlling speed would be the one, Texas Rain along the rail, or a long shot with a chance that might get in front early is the four i'll give you two one and four kurt yeah stretch i really like number three big stretch made a big move last time out going into the turn into the head of the lane but hidden grace kept on running and big stretch did too but that move costed any late action in the race i think chavi and chow will time it better today so giving him a big shot at a good price, five to two. And for second, I do like Texas Rain as the horse has run second nine out of the last 15 starts. Good luck here in race four.
Texas Rain, the current 7-5 favorite, leads the Phillies and Mares into the starting gate. Spun line now moves in. Next up, big stretch from the middle. Just two left to load. Cypress Point. And now just waiting on Ain't She Darling to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off in the Portales. From the inside, away well was Spun Line. Also, Texas Rain shows some early speed to the outside. Cypress Point now going after the early lead and is going to get it. To the outside, Ain't She Darlin' putting on the pressure spun line. Now back to third with Big Stretch in fourth. And the early trailer will be Texas Rain. The opening quarter, a quick... 22 and 3, and Ain't She Darlin' now takes the lead by two to the inside Cypress Point spun line. Starting to get rolling from third, big stretch in fourth, and Texas Rain is the trailer. The half 48 and 3, three lengths from front to back, as Ain't She Darlin' still controlling it, spun line. Looking behind, Jorge Carreno takes a look and now engages Ain't She Darling. Big stretch on the outside, making a three-wide bid. Texas Rain trying to keep up on the rail and the trailer now. Cypress Point, three-quarters and one, 14 and one. Ain't She Darling on the inside, spun line. Folks, a nose in front. Big stretch trying to reel them in three wide. They hit the head of the lane, and Spun Line has that lead. Now, big stretch is digging in on the outside. Texas Rain trying to rally from third. Spun Line with the lead with a 16th of a mile to go. And Spun Line is going to take the Portales. Big stretch, second best. Third to Texas Rain, and fourth to Ain't She Darling.
The Stewart's a poster number two, spun line as the race winner. Second goes to number three, big stretch. Third to number one, Texas Rain. And fourth to number five, ain't she, darling? They went the opening quarter 22 and three. The half 48 and three. Six furlongs, 114 and one. The mile, 140 and three. Time for the mile on a 16th, 146 and four. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Portalis, that's number two, Spun Line. Spun Line is a chestnut mare, six years old, by hard spun, out of the mare's street line, by street cry. Owned by Ira Donald and King Couture, trained by Jared Brown, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the mile of the 16th, one. 46 and 4. Assiniboy Downs is pleased to have on hand Bruce Stratton, a longtime supporter of racing here in Manitoba and a close personal friend of Charlie Smith and Terry Props to make a presentation to the winning connections. Also, congratulations goes out to jockey Jorge Carreño, who scores the double. Back to back winners for jockey Jorge Carreño. Race four is official in the upcoming fifth race. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. There are no changes. We'll carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick four. Turning your programs to race number seven. Scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. That's race number seven. Scratch the six, Twisted Oliver. $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering starts right here in race number five.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number five, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering with a $1,500 claimer. So some of mares, three-year-olds and up, they're gonna go five and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number four, stretch spun line. Ran a flat one last time out and came back with a great effort today. Yeah, it, it, uh, Carino put the horse in, the mare in the right spot and and uh, made a nice move. and. And kind of opened up, and and well, stretch made a a good stretch run, but uh, another wide trip. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a really smart uh, ride. Everybody tried to find a spot. It was an exciting race for five horses. There was a lot of things moving, moving parts. Coupled a bit of a duel, drop back, closes. Very exciting race. All right, on to race number five. Who do you like in here, Stretch? Okay, I'm uh, long shot hunting a little bit. Uh, Landed on the one is my top selection, sitting at five to one. The key is this last race. Uh, I really do like how this horse came off the pace last time. Didn't think the horse could win last time. I thought it was going to get in a duel, and sure enough, was was closing late. And we haven't seen that. It, way back at Fort Erie, um, just over a year ago, the horse came off the pace. But ever since then, was always showing a lot of speed. And so... That's what I'm looking for at this level is kind of the wake-up type horses, and I think this horse uh, potentially could get a nice trip if it goes it if it gets dueling in the dueling with some of the others. I, I don't think the horse will be there. I'm hoping just sits off and, and makes a run and five to one, uh, maybe a little low, wouldn't mind a little higher, but for me it makes sense to include for sure. Yeah, I think the horse will be coming off the pace today especially with number six, Catalina Dreaming in here. First time out, Catalina Dreaming showed blazing early speed, only for a quarter of a mile before backing up to be beaten double digits at the $2,500 level. But then last time out, was held up in the gate and never got out. But what I like about that race is the horse ran evenly throughout and actually made up some ground in the end, only to be beaten by five and a half lengths. Catalina Dreamin's best running is on the front end. Catch me if you can. The track has been playing well to speed this evening. So I think if this horse does shake free, they're going to have a tough time catching her. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. It was almost my top selection. Uh, I, I agree with everything you're saying there. Three of nine at the distance uh, for sure. And now when I'm playing sequence bets, if I'm taking multiple horses, I'm making sure I'm taking a different type of running style. And that's why I've got three is selected as my third selection. 
in case that the one and the six battle up front, and who knows, there could be a couple other ones that might show up a, a bit of early speed. The seven way back showed some speed. And that's so I'm going to the three as the closer of the race. Uh, race for 2,500 non winners. Yes, that's non winners, but there's some 2,500 that, that the trainers drop the horse in, don't want to go right to the bottom. So sometimes it can com- be competitive. Distinct approvals, as you can see, came back in one. A star to be has some talent and, and showed it last time. So get the pace backing up. It's not the run right uh, track bias right now, but we'll see. It, it's still early. That's kind of my protected uh, play with the three. Yeah, another horse I like, number two, Hey Hey Runaway. Here's a horse that did show speed last year. So far this year, hasn't really showed it. Did last time out for a little while. That was going seven furlongs. But in the three sprint races, was back three or four lengths. But two outs ago, this horse made a power move, grabbed the lead, but it was Button Mushroom and the Whiskey Work who rallied late to steal first and second away from Hey Hey Runaway. This horse does like the distance, has been in the money seven out of 14 times with two wins and three seconds. So I think this horse, Jorge Crano, he's looking to go three in a row. I think he does have a big shot with the drop from 25 to 15. Yeah, the same angle and, and the cutback. The other closer I've got in here is is the four. Again, uh, same type as the other, as my other selection. Didn't run that well last time. But that's the type of these horses are. They run one good one, one bad one. There's a reason why they haven't won it this year. So it's a matter of who's going to kind of wake up with the right trip. Might might uh, end up there. Uh, three to one for me is a little bit low, especially uh, a lot of guessing on who's going to wake up in this race. Yeah, also look at number seven, I'm all in. And this horse actually ran a really good race first time out. As it only got beat by a length of three quarters. If you're playing Wits Gatto at five to two, look at this horse sitting at 18 to one. This one has every reason to improve off that first outing. If there is a pace battle between the one and six, I'm all in. Shows that same running style that it did last time out. It could be the big upsetter in here and never going wrong with 18 to one. And when you're playing a horse like that. Absolutely. And again, I keep coming back to the inconsistency of these horses. So you want to get your value. Just the last one we'll mention is the five was in the five non four last time. And we know how tough those were. Insanely tough. tough. Exactly. So and ran evenly. And that would be probably good enough in this race. The first start out stumbled, throw that race out. So if if you're might have to take a bunch to get by the first leg of the pick four. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number five. Stretch, pick four time. It what is, do you got? It is pick four. We uh, One of us, we both cannot win today on this. I, I wouldn't feel bad if I won the ticket. Um, anyway, <laughs> one, <laughs> pick four. One, two, three, four, six in a wide open first. One and seven in the sixth. Key in the outside horse, the eight in the seventh race. And a bunch in the last one, two, three, four, six. It's 50 bucks. Find some friends, partner up. There you go. And myself, I took one, two, and six here. In the next race, same as stretch, the one and seven. Then I keyed the one in race number seven. And I also took a bunch in the last one, two, three, four, six, eight, and ten. At ticket $42. Good luck with all your wagers here in race five. And we'll see you back for race six. on the track for race number five they're gonna go five and a half furlongs for nine thousand dollars number one is enhanced finance 
owned by Mike Taranjo, trained by Lee Deleron with Praven Badri. Number two is Hey Hey Runaway, owned by TMS Stable and Two Points Ranch, trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Wits Question, owned and trained by Stephen Gaskin with Ronald Alley. Number four is Wits Gatto, owned and trained by Doug Mustard with Sheldon Chickeness. Number five is This Little Lime of Mine, owned by Two Old Denant Stable, trained by Lee Deleron with Nyrone Austin. Number six is Catalina Dreamin', owned by Jennifer Taranjo, trained by Jerry Gorno with Siobhan Bell. Running out the field is number seven, I'm All In. Owned by Memory McCracken, trained by Courtney Ross with Neville Stevenson. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering here in race five. They go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, here we go. The girls going five and a half furlongs. We'll see if it's uh, fast early. I've got the one at five to two. Don't like the price. I think this horse could sit just off and take over. Big race last time. Expect a better price. Six is probably your speed of the speed. If this horse shows up like it did a couple of years ago, watch out. Others to consider if the pace backs up, you're looking at the three horse wits question and even, even the four. Wide open race, but I'm gonna go one, six, and three. Yeah, Stretch, I like number six, Catalina Dreaming in here. I think she's the fastest of them all. Throw out that last race. The race before, she hit the front end easy, but only lasted for a half a mile. Has two under her belt now. Cuts back in distance to this five and a half furlongs. And I love the price at six to one. I also like number two, Hey Hey Runaway, taking the drop from 2,500 to the 1,500. Expect her to show a little bit of speed today. So I'm gonna give you six and two. Good luck here in race five. ultimate chase the ace we have drawn our winning ticket that ticket number one six six eight once again ticket one six six eight in winnipeg's ultimate chase the ace and a reminder 
Don't throw away your tickets because if ticket number 1668 does not show up to guest services in the next five minutes, there will be a redraw. Enhance Finance, the first one into the starting gate. Next up, the two to one favorite, Hey Hey Runaway. Which question, the next to go in. In the middle, Wits Gatto. Now stepping up this little lime of mine. Just two left to load. Catalina dreaming. And just waiting on I'm all in. After Catalina dreaming goes in. She was halfway in and stepped back.
Now she's in. Just waiting on I'm all in to the outside. The fill is set. They're at the post. And they're off. Breaking slow was this little lima mine. Showing speed on the outside. Catalina dreaming quickly. Goes out and secures the early lead by a length and a half. In advance finance. Back in second. Two more lengths back. The hey runaway. Wits Gatto settled in fourth. Then another four back to the trio. This little I'm a mine wits question, and I'm all in. The opening quarter, 23 and 1. Catalina dreaming. The lead is shrinking up by a length. To the outside, Enhanced Finance. Hey, hey, Runaway making a three-wide bid. Wits Gatto, a four-wide bid. They hit the head of the lane. Catalina Dreaming, the short lead. Enhanced Finance in between horses. Now, hey, hey, Runaway. And showed a good burst of speed with Wits Gatto to the outside. But it's hey, hey, Runaway. Gonna take it. Wits Gatto for second. Third, this little lima mine, and fourth, enhance finance. The Stewart's supposed to number two, Hey Hey Runaway, as your race winner. Second goes to number four, Wits Gatto. Third to number five, This Little Lima Mine. And fourth to number one, Enhance Finance. They went the opening quarter, 23 and one. The half, 48 seconds. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 108. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number five. That's number two, Hey Hey Runaway. Hey Hey Runaway is a bay mare, seven years old, by Regal Ransom. Out of the mare, Black Arrow by Kipling. Owned by TMS Stable and Two Points Ranch. Trained by Jerry Brown and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. 
Time for the five and a half furlongs, 108. Congratulations goes out to trainer Jared Brown and jockey Jorge Carreno for teaming up for the double. Back-to-back -back winners for trainer Jared Brown and jockey Jorge Carreno. But add one more win to jockey Jorge Carreno who scores the natural hat trick. Three wins for jockey Jorge Carreno. Race five is official in the upcoming six race. There are no changes. Kicking off the late pick three in race six. Well, you want to keep up with all the local horse racing news and events, and events at Assiniboine Hounds? Then be sure to subscribe to our weekly e-newsletter, The Inside Track. You can subscribe to it at asdowns.com.
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number five, we had a claim to report. Claim for $1,500 was number one in Hans Finance. Claim by Chris John Bjarnson, trainer Robert Smith. And welcome back down the paddock for race number six for this $2,500 claimer. For three-year-olds and up that are non-two of the year or non-four lifers, they're going to go five and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number five. It's becoming Carino night at the races as he wins another one on a good ride on Hey Hey Runaway. Absolutely, yeah. We, we ran, we, the race went how we thought it might go. Six going to the lead, one chasing, making the move. Carino just sat back. And Hey Hey does have some back class and kind of runs it a little bit higher. We used him, I kind of defensively used him uh, just because I know that he's got some talent. Uh, but like you said, just find Carino tonight and it might be, it's not a bad angle. Not at all. Okay, on to race number six. Who do you like, Stretch? Okay, I'm going with the top selection, but we both have, and that's going back to the one, Dan Rebel. Uh, two back was an incredible race. Uh, even for that level, made a nice wide move and, and just powered away. Could have won by more. I, I just like that race so much. We went back to them last time, moving up to 5,000. Didn't run a bad race. Just found out that uh, that that's a little bit too classy maybe for this horse. Drops back down to the 25. Perfect spot by, by the trainer to put him back where he belongs. Sim some, somewhere in between... The first start and the second start makes this horse very tough to beat. Yeah, no doubt about it. I like him a lot in here. Another horse I like at a big price. That's number three, Senior Blair. Senior Blair really hasn't run a bad race. First time out, yeah, seventh beaten 14 to my cowboy, who easily went wire to wire in the top two, ran away with that race, but then dropped in for five, ran behind Simple Man and Warbridge running third. Then it was behind Soul Obsession, Call You Tomorrow, and ran a good race last time out against Dan's a Rebel and losing the photo to El Chairman, who did come back to win. I think this horse has good tactical speed to be right behind that those early leaders, giving this horse a good shot at a good price. Yep, that's fair. Uh, I've landed on the seven as my second choice for a few reasons. One, that two furlong race was is going to sharpen this horse up for speed. The trainer, the jockey in that race asked the horse early, which is why you have to. You've only got two furlongs. Um, and then a few of the other races are showing really good speed. A couple of those five and a half furlong races, a few back. Um, make this horse probably the speed of the speed. They are going five and a half, and that extra half is going to help out for sure. Uh, there is other, some other speed, but I just think this horse has enough speed to potentially clear. And uh, that trainer-jockey combo already has two. Yeah, looking for three in a row. Take a look at number six, Call You Tomorrow. Here's a horse that's been very consistent running here. First time out, uh, this horse was in 10,000 optional claiming. Ran fourth, ran third for 75, and then took the plunge. Ran third, beaten six to a horse that was loose on the front end. Lost to another loose horse. But got the jo job done last time in 25 non-winners of the year. But that was a tough one with Camino de Estrella also taking the drop in from 35. So call you tomorrow. Today, wow, this horse <laughs> is always bet off the board. You're getting six to one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, why not? Why stop at uh, one Jared Brown horse? So I'll go to the, I know it's Carino is on the seven. But this Towards the Light uh, is one of those closers that if, if the pace battle uh, backs up, this could be potentially the closer. The two did beat the seven a few starts ago. So that's one thing to con uh, basically consider. The Mountaineers uh, horses have had mixed results early. So 
we'll see. There hasn't been a lot of them, but uh, we'll just see how they do after today. Uh, that would kind of give me an idea if I go back to any Mountaineer horses, if any show up later in the, the week. Yeah, another one to look at. Uh, number four, Wake Up Call. Took the big plummeting class from the first level allowance to 2,500, going five and a half. And that was in the Jared Brown barn, showed speed, but then faltered and lost to a good horse in Wits Coco. Goes off Lasix today, goes over to the Tom Gardipe Jr. barn, but there is a lot of other speed in here to go with Wake Up Call. Does have back class, but off that last race, we didn't like him that day. And it's tough to like them coming right back with the others that are in here. Yeah, it's kind of the, there are races last at, at Turf Paradise um, that came off the pace. It, maybe he just doesn't like the track where he did like Turf Paradise. And that certainly can be the case. Turf Paradise is a harder track than ours. Sometimes that's that's uh, an angle for some of the horses. Um, any uh, else to add? And the five will knows, uh, kind of off form right now. Did have a third against Contraband two outs ago. Contraband would look really good in this field. Didn't run a jump last time out. Maybe it could go back to that Delta Downs race in late February. If it shows up and shows that, it does have a chance. But on current form, can't bet it in here. So let's go to our wagers here in race number six, Stretch. What do you have? All right. I did get the early pick three that I played. Let's try to win another pick three. Uh, $2 pick three. One three with one eight with one three. My first and second picks across the board. That's $16. If you want to play just a dollar, it's only eight bucks. And myself, I'm going after the exactor in here. I'm putting the one on top with the three seven underneath. That's a $10 exactor wheel, a dollar for two bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six, and we'll see you back for race seven. So on the track for race number six, they're going to go five and a half furlongs for $10,200. Number one is Den's a Rebel, owned by Parker Wallet, trained by Steve Kaplan Jr. with Sheldon Chickadess. Number two is Towards the Light, owned and trained by Jared Brown with Tyrone Nelson. Number three is Senior Blair, owned and trained by Elton Dickey with Chavi and Chow. Number four is Wake Up Call, owned by Cruz Benzmiller, trained by Tom Gardeby Jr. with Ronald Alley. Number five is Will Knows, owned by Kenneth Lee Gardeby, trained by Tom Gardeby Jr. with Douglas Badaloo. Number six is Call You Tomorrow. Owned and trained by Courtney Ross with Neville Stevenson. Rounding out the field is number seven, Laughing Latinos. Owned and trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Post time for race number six, five minutes away.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going five and a half furlongs. Competitive race again. I've landed on the one, the horse on the rail. This horse showed so much the first start here at ASD. And then the next time ran a nice even race. I think this horse is going to run closer to the previous race. And if it does, watch out. Should be very tough. The outside horse is the seven horse coming from Mountaineer. Showed speed at a two furlong race going to show just as much speed it's just a matter of can get the five and a half i think he can and a closer's the two let's round it out one seven and two yeah stretch i also like number one dan's a rebel in here i think was in too tough last time out but the first race was absolutely spectacular i think the horse will stalk the early speed and then try and pounce on him by the time they hit the lane the other horse I like in here, number three, Senior Blair, has a great running style. Just off the leaders in a stocking roll. Ran right behind Danza Rebel. Danza Rebel, eight to five. 15 to one on Senior Blair. I'll give you one and three. Good luck here in race six.
time. Dan's a rebel. The current three to two favorite steps into the starting gate. Next in towards the light. Senior Blair finds his spot. Next up, wake up call. Will Nose steps up and in. Two left to load. Call you tomorrow. And just waiting on laughing Latinos to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the far outside, Laughing Latinos shows good early speed, as does towards the light on the inside. Dan's a rebel coming up the rail in third in between horses. That's call you tomorrow. Four wide wake up call. Sitting back watching the action, Senior Blair. And well back to the early trailer. That's going to be Will Knows. The opening quarter, 24 seconds. And wake up call on the outside, Laughing Latinos. On the rail, making a three wide bid. The favorite, Danza Rebel. As they hit the head of the lane, three across the track. The half 47 and four. On the outside, Danza Rebel. In between horses, Will Knows, Laughing Latinos. A late rally by Towards the Light. But Dan's a rebel is going to take the sixth. Second is going to go to wake up call. Third to laughing Latinos. Close for fourth. The Stewart's supposed to number one, Dan's a rebel as your race winner. Second goes to number four, wake up call. Third to number seven, laughing Latinos. A photograph has been called to determine the fourth place finisher. They went the opening quarter, 24 seconds. The half 47 and four. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 107 and one. Results of the photo show number six, call you tomorrow. Finish in fourth.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race six, that's number one, Danza Rebel. Danza Rebel is a dark bear brown gelding, six years old, by Revolutionary, out of the mare, Sister Chelsea, by Chelsea's Cat. Owned by Parker Wallet, trained by Steve Kaplan Jr., and ridden to victory by Sheldon Chickeness. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 107 and one. Race six is official in the upcoming seventh race. Kick it off late double wagering. Scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. That's in this a seventh race. Scratch number six, Twisted Oliver. Late double wagering kicks off here in race number seven. The final Manitoba Night Market and Festival of the Summer takes place this Saturday, August the 28th from 3 to 11. There'll be more than 15 food trucks, over 100 local vendors and artisans, a beer gardens, live bands, kids activities, and much more. Tickets are just $7. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, the final Manitoba Night Market and Festival is this Sunday, August the 28th from 3 to 11.
And ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's ultimate chase, the ace, Tannis T went to the board and selected the Jack of Hearts. So she got herself $25 and the jackpot keeps growing over $4,300 in Winnipeg's ultimate chase, the ace. Welcome back down the paddock for race number seven. We have a $5,000 claimer. Four three and up maidens are only going to go five furlongs. Quick look back at race number six stretch. Dan's a rebel, just like we thought. The drop in class hit the winner circle again. Yeah, and actually stumbled a little bit out of the gate. Didn't break sharp. And then uh, Sheldon. And Sheldon, a great ride. He was up the rail. He knew he couldn't get through. He swung three wide and clear sailing from there. Yeah, and that was the same move. We saw two back, got on the outside and made that nice power move and, and just shows the class level. Well spotted by the trainer. And then the four woke up a little bit. So. Yeah, definitely. Maybe taking it off Lasix was a good thing there. All right, on to race number seven. We got a huge favorite, three to five on Steely Caper. Yeah, so this was uh, Monday's races, uh, one of the Monday races, and then they've added the three in here. I've landed on the eight mainly because I, I think it's worthwhile to take a shot against against the one in here. Originally, last Monday, I did have the one, and actually, Kurt convinced me to take a shot, so I switched my picks. Kurt switched And so his. did I. This is the best ever because <laughs> there is a chance that one of those two win and each one of us, oh, I can't believe I switched. And I think everybody can relate to that, having this and you switch last minute. So one of us are, are going to, well, if one of those two win. So I've landed on the eight because of two back. That's the key for me. Was in maiden special weight, ran a really nice race against a bunch of nice uh, maiden horses that are going to go on to win for sure. Strong belief. Um, is a, an improving horse. It came back to win. Yeah, exactly. And then Daddy's Rare Edition. And came back to win. win. One Sky came back, back to win. win. <laughs> High Rise in the Peg came, came back, back to win. win. So there you go. Last race, the reason you kind of bailed on the horse was you didn't like the last race. I agree with you. 
So I'm taking a chance. Not a good effort. They drop the horse back down in for 5000 I like that Dwight's on this horse because he likes to get horses out. So I think it's kind of a perfect match for this type of horse. They're only going five with the scratches post seven. I think that's okay because this horse has a potential to clear, should get to the turn first, and try to keep going. All right, I'll let you talk about the favorites. Let me talk about the first-time starters. The two Chester G, the dad won one race at five and a half furlongs, and that was at Turf Paradise. The mom also just broke the maiden, and that was at Penn National at the bottom, has a half sibling that has had 12 starts and still a maiden. The seven forgotten son, that dad was the Arkansas Derby winner at a mile, was a three-time winner. The mom, an eight-time winner, from six to a mile on a 16th, made 173K, five siblings, a full sibling, four wins, 82K from six to a mile, a couple others unraced, and another one, three wins, 61,000, all going short, and the seven forgotten son is one of my picks. I really like that workout, July the 13th at Canterbury. 48 and 2, a nice easy breeze out of the gate. Came to a Cinnaboy Downs, worked 50 and 3. I'm liking the price right now. Unforgotten Sun currently at 8 to 1 in these bottom maidens. Yeah, this, this horse was the one horse in, on the Monday, and I did use that horse, and then I decided I'll use uh, the three as my third selection. And that was because a couple of the races. Uh, Ran nice the second start, hasn't run much since, is the cutback. Maybe that's the wake-up horse to be in the money if if the 1-8 and eight battle sets it up potentially for a closer. Yeah, another one to look at, number five, Wit and Whiskey. One start, stumbled, DNF, walked off, and that was for restricted 7,500. But you never know with Henry Witt Jr. and Jerry Gorno. When they light up the board, they light it up, and you're getting 11-1 to one on a little bit of an unknown product. Even though some of these works are slow, that is a good work at Lone Star out of the gate, 49-1 and one breezing. But let's go to our wagers here in race number seven, stretch. Yeah, a simple win bet, just 20. You know, sometimes I like to go 30 or 40. I'm just going to take a bit of a shot here, 20 win eight. Yeah, I don't like the one overly. I did key him in my pick four, but I keyed the Danza Rebel in my pick five. I'm going to stretch bet in here. Yes. I'm taking 178, 178 with 13578. Two dollar tractor wheel, $36, a $1, only 18. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven. We'll see you back for race eight for Jackpot High Five Wagering. on the track for race number seven they're gonna go five furlongs for ten thousand dollars number one is steely caper owned by henry witt jr trained by jerry gorno with antonio whitehall number two is chester g owned by rayanne wahoban trained by tom gardeby jr with douglas battaloo Number three is Zuri Razazi, owned by Kenneth Amther, trained by Gordon Amther with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Moses on Main, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Sheldon Chickeness. Number five is Witt and Whiskey, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno 
with Siobhan Bell. Number six, Twisted Oliver was scratched. Number seven is Forgotten Son. Owned by Risa Harris, trained by Tiffany Husbands with Chavi and Chow. Rounding out the field is number eight, War Bucks. Owned by Gary Bergsrud, trained by Devin Gittens with Dwight Lewis. Race number seven, kicking off late double wagering. They'll go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Okay, here we go. The boys going only five furlongs. Quick sprint. It's for maidens. They haven't uh, won a race lifetime. The eight horse ran a great race, two back. Runs back to that, wins. Nine to two is a great value. Runs back to his last race, you won't see him at all. So you've got to determine the price is right, worth the play at five to one. The one is the big favorite. He's always in the realm of things. I don't like that price, but could be there. A long shot that's moving in, wasn't entered, was the three. Nine to one, maybe he gets there late. Eight, one, and three. Yeah, Stretch, I think the one is the one to beat. Not a surprise at two to five. Steely Keeper knocking on the door after the last two starts. But this is bottom maidens. So if you want to take a shot, I'd take a shot at number seven, Forgotten Son. A six-year-old maiden making the debut. Good works at Canterbury before coming here. And really good bloodlines. Also number five, Wit and Whiskey. Showed nothing after a real troubled trip first time out. This horse could be something also at 13 to 1. Good luck here in race 7.
Tea League, Dave Pryor, the three to five favorite in the gate. Next up, one of two first time starters, Chester G. Zuri Razazi, the next to go in. Actually, he's still working on Chester G. He's almost in. There we go. He's now in. Zuri Razazi's turn. Next up, Mosey's on main. Wit and Whiskey is next. Now just two left to load. The other first time starter, Forgotten Son. And just waiting on Warbucks to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. Quickly, from the outside, that's Forgotten Sun, showing blazing early speed and opening up by three. In between horses, Mosey's on main to the outside, Warbucks. In on the rail, Steely Caper, Zuri Razazi, sitting in fifth behind them, and then a gap about seven lengths back to the trailers, which are going to be Whitson and Whiskey and Chester G. 23 and 1 the opening quarter and Forgotten Sun in control of the field by three lengths as they hit the head of the lane. Steely Caper trying to reel them in from second to the outside in third. Mosey's on main. Forgotten Sun with the lead coming to the 16th pole. Steely Caper's going to have one more try, but Forgotten Sun, wire to wire. Pulls for a second between Steely Caper and Wit and Whiskey, who came rallying late. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold all tickets. There's a Stewart's inquiry into the running of race number seven. Please hold all tickets. The Stewart's supposed to number seven, Forgotten Son. As your race winner, a photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 23 and one. They have 47 and one. Time for the five furlongs, 101. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stewart's inquiry is into the start of race number seven.
Results of the photos show number five, Wit and Whiskey, finishing second. Third went to number one, Steely Caper, and fourth to number three, Zuri Razazi. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stewarts will be removing the inquiry sign off the board. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number seven. That's number seven, Forgotten Son. Forgotten Son is a dark bear brown gelding, six years old by Lina David. Out of the mare, excellent Lisa by Devil is Due. Owned by Risa Harris, trained by Tiffany Husbands, and ridden a victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the five furlongs, 101. Race 7 is official in the upcoming 8th race, kicking off jackpot high five wagering. There are no changes. The jackpot high five carryover, just under $94,000. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine for just $3.95 and half-price appetizers, plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m.
and welcome back down the paddock for race number eight jackpot high five wagering for this $7,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up they're gonna go one mile quick look back at race number seven stretch forgotten son first time starter gets it done the other one that was almost a first time starter runs second yeah, no, no kidding. We, both long shots. Both, I long, said to both play. long shots for sure. And the interesting thing is, last Monday that seven horse was the one I actually included them um, on my pick four ticket, which means nothing because they didn't race. And and the horse goes off at twenty six dollars. So uh, a good pick. The workouts were there. Kind of the comments was, why would you bring that horse from Canterbury? Yeah. And it's, a six year old. Six year old. Keep it around. So Absolutely. Long? So it has to show some talent. So let's go. Let's start with. Uh, the three horse here, uh, this was a re, uh, eight of the 10 in here. We're racing on Monday, last Monday, and the three and the four have been added in here. And so originally one was my top selection, but the three is just uh, making that drop, racing against Tap Master, Mr. Dazzle, who we ended up seeing win earlier on the card at uh, a higher level. Yeah, second level allowance. Yeah, so this horse has, has been close. That first race at ASD going seven furlongs was a really good race against Himmelstein. Cuts back. The distance is okay. You can look and see the horse has been in the money a bit. And uh, I just think this horse is going to get a pretty good trip. They're going the, the full mile. Uh, Badry's going to probably put this horse just behind and, and see if the pace backs up. Certainly could be there. Yeah, he could even put it on the front end. The way the racetrack is playing today, speed's doing so well, and this massive drop. I really like Rail Splitter. I also like number 10, Rydum. This horse showed speed two outs ago, got caught really late, but the comeback race was so good, sitting behind the speed, pouncing on it, and then drawing off to win by an easy four lengths. Does draw the outside in here, but there's a lot of horses that are deep closers. So going the mile, we'll be able to get some good positioning. Five to one on the board right now. Not a bad price for Rydum. I think has a big chance. Yeah, it's going to have to find position. You go from the outside, I'm going to the inside. As I mentioned, this was my top selection long shot uh, last Monday. Um, I like this horse for a few reasons. Yes, the horse lost at a lower level. If had a cleaner trip, I think the horse would have won by four or five, and it would have been talking a different story. And because of that, I'm going to get a great price. Showed speed along the rail, chasing uh, Pucker, I believe, was in that race. Somebody, somebody like that got trapped a little bit and kept going and then tried to open up um, and then just got beat after that start. So there's some nice races and some figures that I do like this horse. 15 to 1, I will take it all day long. Yeah, another horse to look at. Number two, maybe sometime. Another dropper in here. This horse always gets respect, but not today. Currently at 8-1. to one. I don't think this horse liked that sprint race last time out. The two route races were good ones. Running second behind Silver Luke Silver. And then two outs ago, running third behind Lysman Good so far and Monstradamus. Yes, the track isn't playing for a horse that does this. But Wendy Anderson has a nice combo between the two and three. And I think both of them. Running their best races, great shots. Agree. That, I think that's the case for uh, of many of these. If they run their best re best race, they certainly can be there. The other one that's uh, added in here is the four. Has been claimed four of the last five times. Running at the 75, 5,000. This is about the level the horse belongs. Should get, uh, if the horse can come off the pace like it did two back, that horse should be uh, in the mix for sure. It, it's a great race to end off the card. Thanks for everybody for staying up late. We're we're going late because of the eight races, but the payouts and the pick four. You're alive in the pick five. I'm alive in the pick five because I I keyed two different horses. Yeah, I messed up. No, not at all. That's how, remember we talked. We've talked about that. That's yeah, how I've I like been playing going it. all in, but uh, I'm learning from stretch. I don't like getting beaten up every day, <laughs> so it's good to uh, move it around a little bit. But yeah, there's some good prices alive. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number eight. All right, Stretch, how are you going to end it off? Okay, so we're going to, here we go. Here's my long shot that I don't want to miss out on. 30 to place on the one. And uh, just in case the class takes over, I'll do a $5 exacto box, one three, finishing off big. 
and myself, a hot horse in this condition with two droppers. I'm doing the Exactor box, two, three, and 10. A $1 one is six bucks, but I got a $5 one for 30. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number eight, and we'll see you back tomorrow, 645 Central for ASD Live. So on the track for race number eight, they're going to go one mile for $14,800. Number one is Club Champ, owned and trained by Courtney Ross with Neville Stevenson. Number two is Maybe Sometime, owned by Wendy Anderson and Rob McDonald, trained by Wendy Anderson with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number three is Rail Splitter, owned by Wind Dancer Stable and Daryl Pranica, trained by Wendy Anderson with Praven Badry. Number four is Out on Saturday, owned by Jared Brown and Sue Crane, trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreno. Number five is Maw's Mischief, owned by Jennifer Taranjo, trained by Jerry Garno with Antonio Whitehall. Number six is Really Slow, owned by Ari Donald and King Couture, trained by Jared Brown with Tyrone Nelson. Number seven is Midnight Salute, owned by Neil Vandorp, trained by Carl Anderson with Chavi and Chow. Number eight is Silver Luke Silver, owned by John Clement, trained by Lee Delaron with Leroy Nelson. Number nine is Flash of Glory, Owned by True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Stanley Chady Jr. Running out the field is number 10, Rydum. Owned by Staff Max Stable, trained by Curtis Maxwell with Shavon Bell. Jackpot high five wagering here in race number eight. They go to post in three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys finishing it off, claiming 7,500 going a mile. I've landed on the three horse right now. A bit of the, the class dropper shows that the horse can run. Had a, a trouble trip a couple back. One at a higher level. I think this horse is going to be right close to the pace. And, and if that's the case, the class might just take over. We've seen some speed go gate to wire, unlike previous weeks. A long shot that you got to leave uh, put in there at 17 to 1. That's the one. Club champ. Should be uh, right on the lead and may just forget to stop. Three, one, and four. Yeah, Stretch, I also like number three, Rail Splitter. We've been talking about these droppers, and this one's taking a double drop down to 7,500. That last race lays over this field. So I think this horse is the one to beat. I also like number 10, Ride em. This horse has been getting better with each and every start. One at this level, easy last time. And the two maybe sometime, dropping in from allowance. So I'm going to give you a 3, 10, and 2. Good luck here in race 8.
post time. Wump Champ leads the field in for the nightcap. Next up, maybe sometime. Rail Splitter, the even money favorite, goes in. Out on Saturday's turn. Next up, Moz Mischief. Really slow goes in. Silver Luke Silver steps up. Flasher Glory is next. Two left to load. Ride them to the outside. Now just waiting on Midnight Salute. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. On the inside, Rail Splitter shows a little bit of early speed, but is matched by Club Champ to the inside. Three wide out on Saturday, four wide. Silver Luke Silver, Midnight Salute back in fifth. Then it's Rydum in sixth. To Rydum's outside, that's Flash of Glory. And your early trailers are gonna be Ma's Mischief really slow. And maybe sometime. The opening quarter, 22 and 4. A heated opening quarter. And it's Club Champ on the inside. In between horses out on Saturday and Rail Splitter. These three banging it out. A gap of a length back. That's going to be Midnight Salute and Silver Luke Silver. Rail Splitter. Then on the rail, that's Rydum in a perfect position. Maybe sometime has a bold move going five wide. Well, back to the rest. The half 48 and two. It's Rail Splitter with a short lead. Three quarters, 114 and one. Maybe sometime to the far outside in between horses. Midnight salute. But it's the maybe sometime. Who has the best stride going and maybe sometime has taken off on the field with a 16th of a mile to go. Ride him with a late rally, but maybe sometime is going to take it. Ride him is second best. Third's going to go to Midnight Salute. Close for fourth and fifth between out on Saturday and Ma's Mischief. The Stewart's supposed to number two, maybe sometime as your race winner. Second goes to number 10, Rydum. Third to number seven, Midnight Salute. And fourth to number four, out on Saturday. They went the opening quarter, 22 and four. The half, 48 and two. Six furlongs, 114 and one. Time for the mile, 
one forty one and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race number eight. That's number two, maybe sometime. Maybe sometime is a chestnut gelding, four years old by Desert Code. Out of the mare, too many tomorrows by French Deputy. Owned by Wendy Anderson and Rob McDonald. Trained by Wendy Anderson and ridden to victory by Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Time for the mile, 141 and 2. And ladies and gentlemen, we did have a claim to report. Claim for $7,500 was number four out on Saturday. Claimed by Avery Erfall trainer, Jerry Gorno. Well, now let's head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level. Beer, shots, and wine, $3.95. And half-price appetizers. Racing resumes tomorrow and Wednesday at 7.30.